after doing the coding and after doing the coding and the data cleaning, the next thing that we do is data processing and organization. This is basically the time when we're going to start running our analysis, our descriptive statistics. Uh, when we run descriptive statistics, it's highly likely that we're going to encounter some data distribution problems that we should deal with before doing our final analysis. That's why we call it a pre preliminary analysis because it's analysis by itself. We're going to run descriptive statistics and see if our data needs further management before doing the final analysis that we're going to use it as the, our result. So uh, in data processing and organization, the first thing uh, that we do is uh, we run frequency for all of our variables and we check the following two important things. The first one is, if we have small frequencies, uh, what we call small frequencies, like just um, uh, not, uh, don't take this as a rule, but it's a, an important guide. Uh, if your variable uh, has one response category, which is less than 5%, then this counts as a small frequency. <clears throat> For example, if we have uh, <clears throat> for gender, <clears throat> I'm sorry, if we have one female, two male, and if the females are like 2.3% and the males are like 97.7%, then this is one of the response for gender is less than 5%. And if we analyze this data for, if we include this type of data in our regression analysis, it will lead to a very uh, inaccurate result uh, that we can see from a very wide confidence interval. So we don't want to include such type of variables in our regression analysis, but instead of uh, deciding not to include it, there are some data management techniques that we can use uh, uh, to, uh, to, make the, to make more meaning out of the data instead of just rejecting it. That's what we're going to see uh, now. And the other thing that we're going to check is uh, other than small frequencies, if there is a coding error, uh if there is a coding error uh the the errors that we have seen in the previous slide we have to deal with it and even after properly coding it uh, it's always a possibility that um, we might encounter a coding error so we should keep that in mind so after uh, running the frequency and checking for the presence of small frequencies and coding errors then we do data transformation to manage these problems. So data transformation uh, can, can be uh, creating new codes, uh, especially for questions that we have seen like partly or entirely open-ended questions and numeric variables, or it could be merging a group of responses so that we can handle small frequencies, or it could be recoding. So we have originally coded our data uh, based on our uh, prior understanding of the problem, but after the data is collected, we might need to do a, a recategorization and recoding of our data. So all of these things can be done using the data transformation command on our uh, statistical software. So uh, since the two most important problems are handling small frequencies and the transformation, let's say handling small frequencies. Uh, let's say this is the response that we get for drug discontinuation reasons for uh, our research. And as you can see, uh, these two variables, they have less than 5% response. They have less than 5% response. So these are small frequencies. We don't want them to be, uh, we don't want this variable to be included in our regression analysis as it is, because it is, it's going to lead to a very inaccurate result. So what we can do is we either can do data transformation by merging and recording of uh, the entire variable so that it can uh, give us a more acceptable response category or what we can do is we do we do not have to consider it for further regression analysis so we can present the description uh, in a descriptive table but we do not enter our variable for regression analysis uh, what are the conditions we will see so in data transformation what we do is we create new codes for example coding the open-ended questions coding numerical values or it could be creating new codes from other response groups. For example, uh, the same uh, response that we have seen earlier, if the if we have a, what we originally coded, it is like one, two, three, and four. So we, we believed the other response categories are not going to be that much. And this uh, 
coding is going to work out. But after the data is collected among the other response groups, uh, if we find that religion is uh, religion has a higher response rate of like 21.3%, then we should reconsider our original coding and we should give uh, we should create a different code. So what I what I can uh, do is uh, I can keep the original codes for the first three, and I can give religion uh, the code of four, and I can give other group the code of five. So instead of the originally planned four codes for response category, we can have five response category, which we changed based on the result we obtained from our analysis. Uh, so the other uh, thing that we can do is we can create other groups from already assigned categories. We can we can encounter the opposite of uh, what we have encountered now. For example, uh, these same variable what is originally coded as like one two three four in other groups, or we can make it like this one two three four five. Uh, we believed unavailability of drug and cost of drug are. Uh, like one of the major reasons for drug discontinuation. But when the data is collected, uh, what we get is a very small response for these two variables. So what we can do is, instead of keeping these variables as uh, they are uh, and uh, not including it in a regression analysis, what we can do is we can merge these two groups together so that they will give us like something around 8% and we can make them we can include them in other groups. So our code will be revised thus. This will be one, uh, religion will be two, like lack of family support will be three, and these two will be other groups as uh, together and coded as four. So what we have originally coded is, uh, is has to be changed so that our uh, variable has uh, a reasonably answered responses, which can be uh, included for regression analysis. So the other data transformation that we can do is merging groups. When we merge groups, what we can do is we can create a new uh, group and we can uh, give it a new code. For example, the one that we have seen so far. Uh, so this is coded as one, two, three, four, five originally, but these two, they have small frequencies. So when we merge them, uh, we can give them either other group or if the two variables that we want to merge together have uh, some common, uh, some uh, so if they share uh, some common category, we can give them that. For example, uh, if uh, the cost of the drug is, uh, if the drug is expensive, the patient uh, doesn't buy the drug. If the drug is not available, the patient can't have the drug. So we can merge the two groups and we can, we can give them like, uh, lack of accessibility or accessibility of drug. Or if we if you can't find uh, a single uh, name to put them together, uh, we can give uh, the name of other for the, these two groups and we can merge it as one. So the other is uh, from what we have already uh, coded, we can add one of the response into an already created other group, for example. For example, for this, uh, same variable coded as one, two, three, and four. The cost of the drug has a very small response of 3%. So we can't, if we don't feel like merging it with the above category, when the best thing to do is to merge the cost of the drug into the other group so that our uh, code will be revised as one for drug of uh, drug side effect, two for unavailability of drug, and three for other by adding the cost of the drug into the other group. So these are uh, ways of merging our groups. And again, uh, when we merge, when we code, record our data, what we use is a data transformation technique. And there's actually uh, a transformation command on our statistical software that we can use to do these things. The last one is recording. Now, while transforming our data, what we do is recording. Uh, uh, sometimes, uh, uh, if there's an electronic database from the institution that uh, we want to get our data for uh, our study, uh, the codes might not be as we want them to be if somebody shares us the electronic data. So we have to record some of the variables so that it matches our interest, our uh, purpose of analysis. So if you get the dependent variable coded as one and two, it's always advisable to change that into zero and one for the reason that I said earlier, some of the softwares do not accept a dependent variable 
which is not coded as zero and one. Uh, the other is if we're like collecting the data from different sources, some of the sources, uh, let's say if we're conducting the research in four different institutions and some of the institutions electronic database uh, codes uh, gender as one and two, the other as zero and one, the other uh, male, uh, might flip the male and female as one and two. So instead of um, uh, trying to use all of these data as it is, the best thing to do is trying to give them one consistent code and recording all the data sets that we obtain from the different records. The other is when we do, uh, when we record our variables, uh, when we create new variables and merge groups, as we have seen from on the previous slide, what we're doing is basically recording. So we have a variable which is coded as one, two, three, four, but since we find uh, response rate to have a very low response, we merged it with four and we uh, created a new uh, set of code, which is one, two, three. So this uh, merging uh, groups and creating new groups uh, is also a process of recording. So recording is always on the table when we're doing our analysis. 